Oh, I'm being overtaken! No! It was a Skoda as well. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and this is my YouTube channel, Life in Motion. Now, welcome to a finished 1997 Rover Mini Cooper. Yes, I bought this car back in May. Sorry you haven't seen basically any videos apart from me buying it and what's wrong with it. But as you'll see, there is no Union Jack on the roof. There's no tints. Inside, the dash is completely brand new. And so today, it's all about first drives. I will do another video soon to show you what I've actually done to the car. But for now, let's jump in, let's start it up and let's hit the road. So yes, welcome inside the car. I cannot wait to get driving and show you guys what it's like. So to start with, key on the ignition, you press a little button on the fob, which is the immobilizer, turn that off, and then just a simple twist and you're away. Oh, I love this car. It sounds so, so good. So quick specs before we start. It is a four cylinder, a 1275cc four cylinder. It's got a four speed, which means it goes from 0 to 60 in 12.2 seconds. And it's got 62 horsepower and will go to around about 90 miles an hour or so. Uh, although I drive it a lot slower than that because I want to be careful with it because they aren't the most reliable cars. It's old, it's from 1997. So I've got to be careful. I've got to give it a bit of sympathy. You'll also realize that I've got a mic on, wherever it is. So you've got a mic, hopefully you can hear me better everything in this car rattles so hopefully you can hear me but into first you will notice and i will try and show you that i do tend to heel and toe in this car because the gearbox is okay but it is a little bit temperamental so you've kind of got to be quite slow with it and quite forgiving uh, so first thing to realize is this car is very very small and it's very very low it means that going over traditional stuff like speed bumps is a bit of an issue in this car uh, it also means that it is quite bouncy. There isn't really much ride to it. It just bounces a lot, which, you know, is, is fine, uh, but you just kind of get used to it. Uh, as I said, there's no power steering. There is a bit of play in the steering, but you know, it's as it kind of should be, but it does feel similar to like a go-kart. If you've driven a go-kart before, you'll know no power steering. You kind of turn it and it just goes where, where you basically point it. Um, also very, very simple. Uh, there's nothing really to do in here. As I said, it is a four speed and just getting the heel and toe is quite tricky. Uh, but fortunately, all the pedals are kind of in the same level, the same row. So in quite a few modern cars, they're all over the place. So actually heel and towing is, is pretty tricky. Now when I say heel and toe, it's very, very self-explanatory. Use your heel to press the accelerator while use your toe to brake. Now that sounds very counterintuitive. Why would you want to brake and accelerate at the same time? Well, it's when you're changing gear. Now it's not, I don't think a necessity to do it in this car, but it does make the gear changes a lot smoother. So let me demonstrate. I'm gonna slow down, I'm gonna brake, put the clutch in, and then just blip the throttle as I change. So now the gearbox just matches the revs, the, the road speed and the revs a little bit nicer and just changes a little bit cleaner. Now that is quite important because the gearboxes, they do tend to, uh, to brake in these cars. They do wear quite quickly. Oh God, I can't see a thing. So actually that's quite a, a, quite a useful thing to do with the car. So the mechanicals in this car are pretty interesting. As I said, you've got a four speed manual uh, and you've got a 1275 cc engine, uh, which produces 62 horsepower. Now it's not quick. It goes from 0 to 60 in 12.2 seconds. Oh, see, I've ruined, I missed the third. There it is, lovely. See, so it's not quick at all, but it makes a good sound. It's a good sounding car, this one, which is great. These minis have so much character. And actually, I've had a few minis before. Um, I've had one 1998 Rover Mini Cooper, like this car, but I've also had a 2013 Mini Cooper and a 2015 John Cooper Works. And they do have a sense of the character that this car does have. Um, it's such a fun experience being in this car from the driving seat. The windscreen is flat which is like in minis, they've kept that style, which is lovely, but it is flat, 
And also, when you look around you, it's all glass. Everything is so thin. The pillars are so thin, A, P, B pillars, whatever they are. They're very thin, so you can see everything you want to. Uh, mirrors, again, they're tiny, very small mirrors. It doesn't matter, because you can see everything. You can just turn your head and you can see, which is good. Right, heel toe. There we go, that's third. Let's go for a second. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting much, much better at heel toe than I was. Uh, I hadn't driven a manual, let alone a, a Rover Mini Cooper in ages. So getting that right was, uh, was tricky. What else in here? It's just, it's just such a cool place to be. These seats don't really hug you. They're, this car's got a sports pack, which meant it gave you bigger wheels on the outside, the nicer arches. It also gave you these black leather seats. Now, they're more comfortable, definitely, they're lovely, but it does mean that they don't hug you and you do slide about a bit. So on roundabouts, uh, sharper corners, you can tend to just start slowly slide each way on your seat, which is interesting. Uh, but it's uh, it's something to get used to, but it's great fun. But to be honest, I don't drive this car quickly. I just enjoy it. People love it. When I'm right, so let's just cover off some of the uh, the more interesting bits, maybe the the, the, the the not so great bits about driving a Mini that, you know, in this first drive video. So uh, number one, the Speedo is very hard to judge where it is. You know, you've got 10, 30, 50, 70, 90, 110. 110 is a bit, bit, uh, bit um, uh, optimistic. But when you're at 30, it's very tricky to tell whether you're under, whether you're over or not, and the kind of needle bounces quite a bit. Um, also, when you are doing 30, you don't know whether you're supposed to be in third or fourth. It seems you're in your third, the car just keeps wanting to jump like that. And if you're in fourth, the seems just wants to go a bit quicker than 30. So that's kind of getting that right and getting used to how you want to drive it like that. Also, around a little town like this, you know, the car's great, you know, it feels nice, a bit bumpy. You know, but you know, it's only a small car, as I said, it's gonna be a bit bumpy. Um, but when it comes to a faster motorway or dual carriageway, it is a bit nerve-wracking. You only do 50 miles an hour, and actually, you don't want to be going any faster because you are worried that bits are gonna fall off the car. So one thing I wanted to cover is, is why would I buy one of these cars? There are so many cars about, and why would I drive one of these? Well, to be honest, they aren't the quickest car, nor are they the best handling, or the best, most reliable car but they are incredibly fun and they're not quick. Now, when I say that, as in you can be doing 20, 30, 40 miles an hour at most and have a right old good laugh and you know, you don't need to worry about it. It's fantastic, it's just such good fun. It feels nice on the tights and twisties, it does work well. Sometimes, you know, it does want to try and drive itself. You know, it will pull itself off one way. You just got to watch out for that. But you know, in these tight twisty bits, oh, just feels great. So much fun. Now, my other car, I've got, a, I've got a, um, a Cayman. It's superb, it's fantastic. It's an incredibly good handling car and it's very, very quick. But it does mean that if you wanna push that car, you do have to go a bit faster. And we can't do that on the roads. Um, within the speed limits, you've gotta be driving within the speed limits. And so actually that car is one of those bittersweet things where, you know, for a brief, brief moment around a corner on a straight, you feel alive and excited. Most of the other time, you've just got to make sure you're not going over the speed limit. Whereas in this car, I haven't got about 50 miles an hour in this last little edit here. And, you know, it feels like it's going much, much quicker. I'm within the speed limit and it's safe. It's fantastic. Now, um, I say safe. There's only one airbag. The metal is extremely thin and I do not want to roll over in one of these cars. Um, so within reason, as long as you drive safely, you can only do that. Obviously, there are other Rover users on the road, so you've got to be super, super careful. But as long as you drive carefully, you should be okay. Ow, the, oh God. Oh no. Yeah, so one thing, turning circle is not good. There we go. No, I am going right. Power steering, the best probably move first. There we go, into first. Yeah, the, the exhaust is very, very, oh. The, Come on, baby. The exhaust is very, very low. Right. So I've now moved you within a point of view so you can see where I am and you can see the windscreen is flat. You can see seven. Oh, I'm being overtaken. No, it was a Skoda as well. Oh God, right. I told you it wasn't quick. That was very, very, very embarrassing indeed. But regardless of being overtaken by a Skoda, which is not my proudest moment, this is what you see when you're driving out the car and it is hilarious. So, as I said, no power steering, so this feels go-karty. Also, you can, God, you can feel the car kind of swerve, which is hilarious. But let's just change down. Let's go into these corners, nice tight and twisties. And I'll try and show you, if you can, this, this, uh, 
this heel and towing. It is tricky, please forgive me, I'm not great at it, but I am getting better. So I'm gonna do a little hill toe there, and there is one, it wasn't too bad. Going into the corner, nice change. Oh, it's so good. Right, now's another one, hill, hill toe, that was a good one. Into it, there we go. And you can see, when I'm just pointing the steering wheel, it just wants to go where I'm pointing it. Oh, it, oh God, it just feels superb. So from here, the, you just get everything. You get the noise, you get the view, you get everything from it. And as I said, I haven't got over 50 miles an hour yet because you don't need to. You have so much fun from this small little car doing low speeds. Come on, baby. There we go. So I didn't actually say at the start of this video, but it's about 30 two degrees today it's very very warm uh, so i'm going to wrap the video up there and uh, just to summarize what i think about this car well first of all it's not something i would use every day uh, it's a bit tricky to drive it's not very quick it's not economical it costs about 20 pounds to fill up full to a tank and that will last me around about two or three days uh, it's probably going to be a maybe 200 miles i don't there's no clever way of doing it without manually as in kind of checking this the kind of mileometer as you're going along so i've no actually no idea how many miles you can get out of a tank but 20 quid to fill it up which is not a lot um also it's extremely hot as i said there is no air conditioning it's got a blower ready uh, so that's the uh, the asthmatic that they installed into the car blowing through a small straw to quote um quote top gear but it's incredibly fun to drive and so if you're looking for a fun weekend car or a play about one with the kids or one to bring over to your grandparents to show them around because they can relive their youth then this is such a fantastic car to buy and also it's an investment piece so i bought this car during lockdown because i wanted to do it up and have something to do but also i knew that i probably was going to lose any money i even may make a little bit of money at least to cover my costs and that's the best thing about this car is that it is going to be appreciating these cars three or four years ago were much four five six thousand pounds now this car's got 53,000 miles, which a few years ago was actually probably a mid to high range, high mileage car. Whereas now, this is actually a low mileage car. And so if you can pick up a nice one, a nice example, that's got a good service history at a lower mileage, then you'll be onto a winner because in a few years time, I guarantee you that car would have gone up in value and you would have made some money. But for now, it's been an absolute pleasure taking you for a drive in my Rover Mini Cooper. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like the video and you like the car. Also, comment below what Mini you would buy. If you've got a Mini, let me know what you've got. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram and you'll see a little bit more about the cars I've got and a few of the things I post. And also, keep up to date with what I'm doing on the day today. Uh, thanks again, and for now, I'll see you very soon.